Micah chapter 4, we're covering the title, Peaceful Latter Days for Zion. Zion is known as the remnant or the elect of God that God has chosen because they have purified and sanctified hearts. Remember, to be classified as Zion, you do the will of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, The will of God is your sanctification, your purification of heart. Verse 1, And it will come about in the last days, today, that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. Now, Jesus is known as the chief cornerstone of Zion. And we read that in Corinthians and in 1 Peter. But the mountain is Zion. It is the holy mountain that God has established where he dwells. And when you have purified hearts, that any time you call upon the Lord, you enter the mountain of the house of the Lord where God dwells, known as Zion, Mount Zion. And that is where uh, it's entering the sanctuary and the courts of the Lord. And anything you ask, he will answer and give to you. It will be raised above the hills, and the hills is a type of churches. So Mount Zion is above the hills. Again, Jesus being the chief cornerstone of, uh, of the temple being built. It will be raised above the hills, and the people will stream to it. That's Mount Zion. And many nations, people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And let's stop and look at the mountain of the Lord, Zechariah 8.3. Zechariah 8.3 says, Thus the Lord, I will return to Zion. And will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And we are a type of Jerusalem. Romans 2.29 says we're a Jew or a Jerusalem inwardly of the heart. Not to be seen as a Jerusalem on the outside. Then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts will be called the holy mountain. We are to be holy people because we have purified hearts. And sanctified hearts. We are known as Zion, the city of truth. Okay, let's go back. Okay, we're back in Micah 4. And let's look at Micah 4, verse 2, halfway down. He will teach us his ways at the house of the God of Jacob, and that we may walk in his paths. Um, basically saying his paths of righteousness and his ways of righteousness. Far from Zion will go forth the law. Now the law is in Matthew 22, 36 through 40. It says the whole law and all the prophets are contained into two great commandments. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. You do these things and you will enter the kingdom of God. Now, even the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a type of us. Romans 2, 28 and 29. But then he says at the very top in verse 3. And Jesus, he will judge between many people. And render a decision for mighty distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords and plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. A nation will not lift up sword against the people, and neither again will they train for war. Okay, basically what he's saying that in that verse there is that the people of Zion, the remnant, will cleanse the land of their heart. They're going to... Uh, clear the land of its rottenness, 
of its sin, of its iniquity, of its transgressions, of its breaking of the commandments. And you do that by repenting and you're confessing your sins before the Lord in prayer. And you do that by the word of God to cleanse your heart. Okay, that is cleansing the land. In verse 4, each of them will sit under his vine and under his fig tree with no one to make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Don't forget that what they say about the wars in James 4.1, that we can quarrel and fight among each other, and that's like war, quarreling war. And then don't forget who the vine is. The vine is Jesus in uh, Matthew, uh, excuse me, John 15, verse 3. Jesus is the vine, we are the branch. And as you go down in verse 4, it says that no one will make them afraid, Zion, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, though all the people walk each in his each in the name of his God. As for us, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Okay, many other people um, that are not in Zion, they do have gods and they do have idols, and they do follow after the things in the world, the lust of eyes, lust of flesh, boastful pride of life. They follow other gods. Verse 6, In that day, declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather the outcasts. Okay, that's the remnant. That's the elect. The lame are those who have been hurt and broken from people in the world. And they have hit rock bottom and they're lame. Even those whom I have afflicted. In verse 7, And I will make the lame, the broken, a remnant, and the outcast a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion. If you want to cross-reference that, you may. Um, with Hebrews 12.22, Zechariah 8.3. And verse 8, As for you, the tower of the flock, that is the leader, the pastor, the preacher of the flock, and the church is the hill of the daughter of Zion. To you it will come, even the former dominion will come. And basically what he's saying is the daughter of Zion, and we'll describe what the daughter of Zion is in just a minute, is a church that has a form of godliness, but they're not purifying the heart. They don't preach about sin. They don't preach about righteousness. They don't preach about holiness. They don't preach about... Anything that might offend. Now let's go back to the very top. And it says in that bottom of verse 8, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Let's look at the daughter of Jerusalem. It's in Isaiah 37, 27. Okay, it's actually in verse 22 it starts. Let's look at 37, 22 of Isaiah 22. This is the word of the Lord has spoken against him. She, the daughter of Zion, has despised you and mocked you. The virgin daughter of Zion, she has taken, shaken her head behind you. The daughter of, the daughter of Jerusalem. This is the daughter of Zion. The daughter of Jerusalem is the same thing. Virgin daughter of Zion. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? And against whom have you raised your voice? And haughty, proudful, lifted up your eyes. So in other words, the daughter of Zion of Jerusalem is a church that is very prideful, that is a know-it-all, knows all the answers, but they're not following the word of God. They have their form of godliness, and they're learning things that are not true in the Bible, like pre-trib rapture is not true, but they're hearing it in the church, and they're haughty. And they're haughty and lifted up against the Holy One of Israel, in verse 23. And through your servants you have repro reproached the Lord. And... The verse goes on of what happens to the daughter of Zion. 
But that's who the daughter is. She is a church that blasphemes and reproaches the remnant, the elect. And they raise their voices and they're haughty and they lift up their eyes against the Holy One of Israel. Let's go back to where we were. And we're back in the Micah 4. Okay. So where we left off at is at the very bottom. Okay. Verse 7. I will make the lame a remnant, the outcast a strong nation, and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion, and from now on and forever. Verse 8. As for you, O tower, the church, and then let's go on to where we were in verse 9. Now, why do you cry out loudly, there is no king among you, or has your counselors perished? Referring to the uh, daughter of Zion, daughter of Jerusalem, the church. That agony has gripped you like a woman in childbirth. You wreath and labor to give birth, daughter of Zion, the church. Like a woman in childbirth, for now you will go out of the city and dwell in the field and go to Babylon. Babylon is a type of the mixture of the world in the church. That is Babylon, the harlot church of Babylon, the daughter of Zion, is known as Babylon. There you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you. So in Revelations, we know in verse chapter 17, 18, 19, that the Lord will call us out from among the harlot church Babylon. And that is where they have a mixture of the world in the church. So let's move on. And dwell in the field. Okay, verse 11. And now many people, nations, have been assembled against you, who say, let her be polluted and let our eyes gloat over Zion. Talking about the fake church. Verse 12. But they did not know the thoughts of the Lord. And they did not understand his purpose. For he has gathered them like sheaves to the threshing floor. And the sheaves of the threshing floor is the pressure and stress of darkness in their life. Verse 13. Arise and thresh the pressure and stress upon the daughter of Zion, the fake church. For your horn I will make iron. And the horn is those that are loud mouthed, spoken uh, church leaders that do not follow the gospel. He says, I will make iron and your hoofs I will make bronze. And basically, you can look that up in Zechariah 6, verse 1 through 8. Basically means that they're going to have bondage of chains and chains and bondage. That you will pulverize many people, that you will dilute, devote to the Lord their unjust gain. And this church is going to do unjust gain in the very top. And their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. And basically meaning using godliness for the sake of gain. I hope this has blessed you. And God bless.